Did you know that the majority of people impacted by MS will never be in a wheelchair? Howdy, my name's Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio. And in this video, we'll be dispelling common myths about multiple sclerosis. Whether you are newly diagnosed, you've had MS for quite some time, or you're here supporting someone that you love, busting myths empowers us all. Now don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Myth number one, if you have MS, you're gonna end up in a wheelchair. Now, whereas this is probably the most widespread myth, it's simply not the case. In fact, less than 15% of people impacted by MS are likely to need a wheelchair at some point in their life. Today, with the earliest application of the most effective disease-modifying therapies, attention to lifestyle, and symptomatic management, we can make MS boring. Myth number two, MS is the same for members of the same family. That's not the case. MS is the unique interface of your nervous system and your immune system, which is unique for each and every person on Earth. There are actually studies where identical twins both developed MS and they had completely different disease courses. Now it's important to understand this myth is false because if someone in your family has MS, it's natural to think, well, I'm probably gonna end up like they are, which is not the case. Myth number three. If you have MS, you should never exercise. Wow, that's not only wrong, but it's the exact opposite. If you wanna live your best life despite having MS, it's actually critically important that you exercise as part of your lifestyle. Now I have a bunch of videos on this channel about how to successfully exercise with MS. So I'll throw a card up above in case you wanna check that out later. Myth number four, as soon as you start an MS disease modifying therapy, your old symptoms will melt away. That's not how these drugs work. Think of an MS disease modifying therapy the way that you think about a birth control pill. If you have three children and you start birth control, guess what? You still have three children. They don't go away. You take a birth control pill to prevent an unplanned event. Same thing with MS disease modifying therapies. If you have already accrued brain and spinal cord damage, and as a result, you have chronic symptoms, starting a disease modifying therapy won't make those chronic symptoms go away. The goal of a disease modifying therapy is to prevent future attacks, prevent future brain damage with spots on the MRI, slow down brain volume loss, and to slow disease progression. Now at the same time, we use symptomatic management, lotions and potions, and lifestyle changes to minimize current symptoms. Myth number five, MS is contagious, or even better yet, MS is caused by parasites. That's not the case. This has been well studied. We know that MS is an autoimmune condition, meaning your own immune system attacks yourself when it's not supposed to. There is excellent pathologic data, including autopsy studies, which demonstrate that this is not a contagious condition. It's not caused by parasites. Myth number six, MS is a disease only of white people. Also not true. Now, back in the ancient days of yesteryear, when I was in med school, we were taught that it was predominantly a white person's disease, and that's inaccurate. It turns out that populations of African Americans and Hispanic Americans have the same risk of developing MS as do Caucasians. Myth number seven, MS only impacts physical functioning. Not the case. Fatigue, cog fog, and mood, which I refer to as the up there's, are a common feature of MS for lots of people. If we're gonna help you live your best life, we have to address those along with physical functioning. Myth number eight, people with MS cannot have children. That's also very false. MS actually doesn't impact fertility at all. And the likelihood that you pass on MS to your children is not very high. Here in the Midwestern United States where I practice MS neurology, the risk of MS to the general population is about one in 350. Now, if you have MS, your first degree relatives, including your children, have a higher risk of about one in 40. But with certain precautions, we can make that risk much lower. Myth number nine, MS doesn't cause pain. That's BS. I was actually taught that in med school by my professors, but my professors were dead wrong. And in fact, MS can cause a lot of different kinds of pain. Now I have several YouTube videos on this channel about MS related pain. Myth number 10, you can cure MS with diet and exercise. Not true. If you wanna live your best life despite having MS, it is important to pay attention to diet, to exercise, to mindfulness, to brain health. All of those are critically important. And taking a disease modifying therapy is also very important. I view it as an and, not an or, and I wanna bring every tool to bear, including modern medicines. Myth 11 is that if you've achieved disease stability, then it's okay to stop your disease-modifying therapy. 
not true. In fact, maybe the reason things are going well in part is because of the disease-modifying therapy. Now, this has been studied, and time and time again, the answer is the same. When people stop their DMT, a portion of them go on to have attacks, new spots on their MRI, and importantly, progress faster in disability. So if you're tolerating your disease-modifying therapy, let's keep on keeping on. Myth number 12 is that when you're 55 years of age, it's okay to stop your disease-modifying therapy. Not true. Just like in the last myth, if your disease is quiet, that's awesome, but it's probably in part because the DMT is working. And the data shows when you stop your DMT, even at age 55, a good portion of those people go on to have progression. So let's not stop. Myth number 13 is that people with MS shouldn't work or can't work. False. People impacted by MS oftentimes can work. Now it's true that if they have progression in their disease, they may need accommodations at work. But with accommodations, we can oftentimes keep people working for quite some time. Myth number 14 is that if you don't have serious visible symptoms, then your MS isn't that bad. That's false, guys. MS is oftentimes referred to as an invisible disease for reason. Many of the worst impactful symptoms of MS are invisible to the outside observer. Moreover, even if you're not having lots of symptoms, the disease is still active in the background and can catch up with you over time. Don't be lulled into a false sense of security thinking, I'm not noticing stuff, so I'm probably okay. We want you to take disease-modifying therapy today, not just to help you now, but to help the 30 years from you now live your very best life. Myth number 15. All of the MS disease-modifying therapies work just about the same. That's not the case. Some of the therapies are really, really good at slowing brain volume. Others don't do it at all. Some of the therapies are outstanding at stopping new spots and new attacks, and some only do it so-so. All the disease-modifying therapies are not the same. So I want to put you on the most effective disease-modifying therapy that you're comfortable taking. We just busted 15 common myths about MS. What myths have you heard about? Leave them in the comments section below. Now, if you'd like to up your game and learn how to beat up on MS, click the video that's on your screen right now. And if you found this video to be helpful, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future content. Until my next Monday morning video, or my next live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.